today's episode is sponsored by uh Julie is sick today. Oh. Yeah. Everybody give Julie a virtual hug, but don't get too close. Don't get too don't, close. We don't want her to spread her germs. Um mm-hmm. Julie, 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 what hurts today? Everything. What's the main one? My soul. Your soul? No, my throat. My throat is killing me. A little bit it too feels... much. Gaw, gaw, gaw. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You, out of everyone in this world, gets me. <laughs> no, I wish. It's not even anything fun. It's just germs. And the weather is changing. It's starting to get cold. Well, cold-ish. It's a little warm today, although it is, it's a fire day. Uh It's a fire day. I feel it in my lips. I feel it in my lips. Yeah. No, I mean, the potential for fire danger today is, I I just want to say that I know that we talk about silly things here, but I would say that our listeners have learned the most about the weather on this podcast. And you're not wrong. And I would just, thank you. I would just like to make that a point. Um, Yeah. Welcome to You, Me, and Choose Me, your number one source for cheesement on the internet. Julie, Julie, Julie. Julie, we came back and then we left again. (laughs) And then we left again. What was that about? Guess whose fault it was. Guess who didn't plan accordingly. Well, I don't want to put the blame entirely on you. But... (laughs) I did you're the one who said but so finish it. I mean, but yeah, I I mean I didn't plan accordingly. One, two, I don't look ahead. I'm just like, oh, this is the thing I have eventually. Um, and then before I knew it, I was like, oh, I leave tomorrow and we have it recorded. <laughs> so Adrian very much looks ahead in his life and for our podcast. And I I don't, I don't, but you know what? Adrian did know when I was flying out ahead of time. Yeah. And he could have. He could have planned ahead. But he also didn't. Yeah. And I just think that's something we don't need to discuss it, but we should acknowledge it. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. So just FYI, uh, you <laughs> left on a Wednesday. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then you came back on a Saturday. Uh-huh. So I did think, okay, we could record on Sunday. This is going to happen. You took a trip to Seattle for your birthday, yes. by the way. This was I at did, the beginning of October. Um, we could have recorded on Tuesday, but we were at a concert together. Uh-huh. Didn't really make sense to record on a Monday. Um, well, and that was my. It was your birthday. Birthday. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that week would that week wasn't going to happen. I just want you to know that while you've been on vacation t- soaking up everybody's germs, I've been I've been chained to work. Oh. Do you know that in the two weeks... Now, let me talk about myself here. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me everything. In two weeks, uh-huh. a normal person works 80 hours. Is Would you uh-huh. say that's a true statement? That is a true statement. In two weeks, I worked 120 hours. <laughs> I just want that to be known. Jail. Jail. Yeah. Um, I yeah. But also that's gonna be a fatty check. Yeah, I did get the check the other day. And how'd it feel? It was worth nice. it or no? No, yeah, it was nice. It was okay, nice. Good. Yeah. But I'm in the I'm in a position right now in my life where I am scared that the money's gonna go away. And so, although the check was nice, that check isn't normal. And, you know, I don't live, I wouldn't say that I live paycheck to paycheck, but, um, but there is a little bit of an anxiety because I have lived that life, you know? Mm -hmm. So, hmm. so anyways, I just want to say, I haven't really, I have not had a life. I haven't done a goddamn thing. Up until this past week, where I had to fit in things that were planned 
months in advance. Oh my goodness. And so, you know, I just want to say <clears throat> that I work hard for my money. And I will also say that it did take a physical and emotional toll on me because in the middle of all that during therapy, I just, I cried and broke down. <laughs> I believe it. That's a lot. That's a lot. And I, I don't think you're alone in the, no, no matter how much people are getting paid right now, I don't think you're alone in the, the anxiety over financial st stability, just because like our world is so unpredictable right now. Um, f fair to feel like that fair yeah anyways so i've been working that's all i've been doing oh. i this this will be this past sunday was the first sunday i had off in two weeks straight and this weekend is going to be my first weekend that i've had completely off the two days in like a month or something i hate that i hate it too i, hate I that. deserve to be a lady who lunches I agree. Is your job um, usually this busy around this time? Usually, yes. But there are other factors that are making it um, even busier oh, this time yeah. of year. So, yeah. you know, here we are. Here oh. we are. So I just, I think from both of us, we just want to acknowledge that we love those who listen to us. And 100%. we appreciate your patience. And yeah. Um, and we're here and we're yeah. not going anywhere, whether you and want we, us to or not. Yeah. We, do, we can't promise stability, but we can't promise that we will always come back. Always. You just, always. you just be a little patient with us and we'll get it back on track. Always. Yeah. Um, do you notice anything different about my setup here? Um, it's such a, it's such a trick question, so don't feel bad, but I do want to bring it up. Um, no, I have. Give me a minute. Okay, <laughs> give me a minute. I mean, from when? From last time we recorded? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You you're not gonna be. You're not gonna get it. Okay. <laughs> give me a second. Okay. Okay. Da, 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 Is it your TV? Da, da. No, no. No, of course it's not. That was a joke. I do plan to get a bigger TV though. So one day hopefully it'll be out to here or something. Okay. Is it about your setup? Is the mic higher up? No. <laughs> I got a new light. <laughs> Can you tell that I look a little bit more color? There's a little bit more color in my face this time. So when I said we'd always come back. <laughs> <laughs> wait i told you that you weren't gonna get it okay <laughs> okay when you ask a question like can you tell it should be something that someone can tell <laughs> well maybe those who watch on youtube will be able to tell and maybe we'll get a comment that says oh my god that's so right like the light does look different it looks a little okay, bit better if you know don't you guys fucking lie in our comment section because i know you jaime what well, if you noticed the light change, the light difference in his setup? I want you to put it in our YouTube comments. Go to YouTube right now and put it on there if you noticed it. And if I catch one of you lying, Angie, we're fighting. Oh my God. Do you remember the last time we hung out with Angie? Yes. <laughs> Oh Did yes, you? yeah, yeah, at the concert. Yeah, and then oh! she disappeared for. It's all coming minutes. back to me, <laughs> guys. Let me tell you something. <clears throat> Is this thing on? Let me tell you something. I I've never been more angry with Adrian in my life. With me? Let me tell them. What did I do? I didn't. Do oh, anything. it's gonna come back to you. It's a lie. Enough. <laughs> Mind you, let us not forget that we were out for my birthday. <laughs> For my birth, we were celebrating me, the one day of the year that I get to celebrate me. Did I celebrate myself for a whole week? That's not the point. The point is that with Adrian there, I was celebrating me. This I month. was also there to celebrate you. Well, how about I tell the story and you let the people decide whether okay. you were there for me or not. Okay? okay. Okay. So he gets, we're already upstairs. He gets there. He comes up. I'm the last one to show up. Yeah, well, I didn't want to say that, but there we go. <laughs> yeah. And he gives me 
a hug. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Space is fine. Polite <laughs> smile. The tightness on the hug was neither here nor there. It was just a hug. A hello, happy birthday. I can't wait to see Alan Stone kind of hug. <laughs> He he looks at Angie, <laughs> and it, he may as well have seen JoJo again, because he walked up to her with the biggest smile on his face, <laughs> hugs her, mouth wide open from joy, can hardly contain himself, tight hug. It la- it lasts enough for me to be upset about it. It lasts enough for me to throw a tantrum over it. And they don't let go of each other until I say something. (laughs) Until I'm like, hello, are we not here for me today? Angie, who is your friend. um, That's neither here nor there. Who has been on this podcast before. Um, Julie uh, or Angie has an interesting life story. You could listen to that episode, you, me, and producer Angie, because we always make fun of Angie that she is, uh, or there's a joke that she's the producer, even though she never shows up to work. Um, I here's what happened mm. I didn't know Angie was going to be there. Oh, so that, that makes all the difference. Yeah, well, it does because that face that you saw was a face of shock and surprise because mm. i did not expect to see her there that right. was, that wasn't a, a, a that wasn't a face i mean yes it was a face of 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 joy because i was seeing her but it was more so a face of shock and awe and surprise because i was like mm. what is angie doing here omg i didn't know she was going to be there and i had not you know i haven't seen her in a while and, let us yeah. remind everyone that technically technically adrian hadn't seen me either because we see each other over zoom the last time adrian and i have been in the same room together is when you couldn't even tell me don't ask me that's not the point but we haven't been in the same room months at least i didn't disappear in the middle of the show for 30 minutes that's fair but that is the woman that you hugged so (laughs) i don't know what to tell you I'm sorry, Julie. I want you to know that I was there to celebrate you. I was excited to see you. I was excited to be, to watch Alan Stone with you again. Um, I was excited to be there with your other friends who I had, who I had never met. They were very lovely and nice people. Um, I was excited to be there with Angie to celebrate you because we were all there to celebrate you. Who's buying it? Who's buying it? Because I'm not buying it. You know oh. what? I had I had totally forgotten about that, and now I'm angry all over again. <laughs> I am. I'm in shock. Okay. Yeah. Well, I am. I you know. <laughs> I'm sorry that you feel a certain type of way. <laughs> Okay. Okay. I'm ending the podcast this is the last episode I don't know what to tell you guys all I can tell you is my truth and my truth is that I was utterly happy to be there with you and I was shocked to see Angie and that was a genuine reaction of shock that's what it was I that's how I that's how I look when I'm shocked Okay, and you were so shocked that you forgot to let go of her during your hug. So what if she wasn't letting go of me? Also, I I hugged her a little tighter. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. It's fine. I'm not upset about it. I can't say why, but you know. No, we know, we know. And fair, 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 fair. Okay. Let it not happen again. I will never look at Angie in the eyes again. That's all I ask. If she is ever around me, I will keep her at arm's distance. And I will say, lady, I don't know you. That's all I'm asking for. That's all I'm asking for. Bare minimum. Julie, you went to uh, Seattle soon after we saw each other. And y- did you have a good time? I caught up with you on your TikToks, which, by the way, let me tell you something about Julie on TikTok. A little fashionista 
if I do say so myself. Julie, your fa- your outfit of the day TikToks do really well. They do. Um, thank you so much. I had a blast in Seattle. I had so much fun. I loved my alone time. It was so nice to not talk to people if I didn't want to and to talk to people if I wanted to. I had a wonderful tour guide and my friend Liz. She was amazing. She knows the city inside and out. She took me all over the place. Um, I took the family by myself i saw that i had my patrick dempsey moment and i said get me to a fairy i want to know what Derek shepherd was talking about did you go to bainbridge uh blah, 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 bainbridge island mm-hmm. uh our friend zach is from bainbridge oh no way yeah very mm-hmm. cute little town dig it had amazing pokey there wow amazing pokey um almost gave up on the bridge i mean on the ferry because I did get lost get, trying to get there. Mm-hmm. And I said, I've walked 10,000 steps mm-hmm. and I don't know where this fucking place is. Mm-hmm. I'm going to, I'm just going to go back home to the hotel. Oh. But I said, you know what? Try one more time. And so there I tried one more time and I made it. I made it. I survived. I did it. Um, Yeah. A very cute little town. Um, Just to, I mean, I, it was a short trip. Like I got off a, maybe walked a couple of blocks and then got back on the ferry Mm -hmm. to go back to Seattle. But yeah, it was super fun. I loved it. Beautiful. Excellent. And did you, you, was was there a particular meal that maybe you enjoyed? The pokey was really good. Had clam chowder, had a lobster roll, had oysters. I mean, it was, the food was really good. And did, was there a particular uh, site that you saw that you were like, this is beautiful? What did you think about the city? The city was great. It only rained a little bit Saturday morning. No, Friday morning for a couple of hours. And then it, it got better. Um, yeah, it was good. I, I mean, it was great. I mean, the, the site from the ferry was gorgeous. Uh-huh. And it was a super clear day. So you could see everything. Um, and then right by Pike Place Market, there's like some seating area that's right above the water and it's gorgeous as well. Um, yeah, it was super great. We went by, cause we went to one of the museums and we went by the Space Needle and that was also great. Yeah, it was, I mean, Seattle was gorgeous, which I knew it would be. Um, I love the weather. I was like, dude, I haven't been cold in so long. I just, I, I, I loved it. I mean, maybe it would be different if I lived there and I had to live with it 24 seven, but it was fun for a cute little stop. I love that. Thank you. Um, you know what you mentioned Pike place and it reminds me, um, have you ever heard of the fish philosophy? No. Okay. So fish philosophy is um um it, so i'm going to i have I, I had to google it so i can i can be accurate about this but i learned about this in college there's a video okay. there's a video that you can probably you might be able to find it on youtube but um filmmaker john christensen was in seattle when he discovered a business that pulsed with enthusiasm and commitment it was the world famous Pike Place Fish Market, where large crowds come to watch fishmongers work and buy lots of fish. So he made a film about the filmmongers. It's called Fish with an exclamation point. And it explores four simple practices that anyone can use to be successful. These practices, known as the fish philosophy, are the foundation of our training solutions. I ate this shit up when I was in college. I loved it um did you know that 85 percent of their of people dislike their jobs fish philosophy inspires and teaches business leaders to create company cultures that keep employees invested in years to come it's you know but also i think it's a great way to uh, you know for like life in any any way these are the four simple practices be there be emotionally present for people Play, tap into your natural way of being creative, enthusiastic, and having fun. Make their day. Find simple ways to serve and delight people in a meaningful and memorable way. And most importantly, I think, is choose your attitude. Take responsibility for how you respond to what life throws at you. Uh, And anyways, if you've never learned about it and you are 
and you need some in inspiration, maybe look up fish philosophy. I really like it. I really enjoy it. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Oh, how fun. Yeah. I've never even heard it, of that. You should take it to your work. You should be like, you guys sit around the fireplace. Let's watch yeah, yeah. fish philosophy. Right. Yeah. That's super cool. Interesting. Okay. Something to look. We all learn something new every day. Anyways. Anyways. Great. Love that for you. <laughs> so other than work. Mm. anything else have you gone to any other shows i did i've been i've been to three shows in the past week tell me everything which is a little bit insane i went to go see i went to the walt disney concert hall uh solange curated a a um uh and three different evenings of music i went to the oh gosh which one did i go to i think i went to the jazz no i went to the opera one um, I went to the opera one. Beautiful, beautiful. Be First of mm. all, I've never been to the Walt Disney Concert Hall. Have you? I don't think I have. It's gorgeous. It was my first time there. I loved it. Um, I saw Solange. Guess who else showed up? Beyonce. Oh. Beyonce showed up. Miss Tina showed up. Jay Z showed up. Uh, At this point, you and Beyonce are intimate friends. I would say so. Yeah. I yeah. Would say. Um, and 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 they had uh their youngest daughter with them. I'm blanking on her name right now. Um, but I we could see them right very clearly. I like I couldn't even watch the performance at one point. Anyways, it uh it was really lovely. It was very very oh, nice. Awesome. Um, where else did I go? Where else did I go? Oh no! Oh, I went to go me? see Tanache. I went to go see okay. Tanache uh, at the House of Blues in Anaheim. Stop it! Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, had lots of fun. Upgraded to VIP for. Um, a lovely viewing area up at the top because you know it's hard to stand and watch with younger people. Um, Don't even get me started. I get it. Yeah, have you ever been to the House of Blues in Anaheim? I went to it when it was at Downtown Disney. I had been to that one too, but I hadn't been to mm. this new one. It's quite lovely, actually. You oh, okay. should go to a show there. I shall. Yeah, I will do it. I'll meet you there, but make okay. sure that we we buy the VIP tickets online before the day of the show. Okay. Um, and then um, was this no, no two nights ago I went to go see Remy Wolf. Do you know who Remy Wolf is? Oh, fun! Uh, yeah, I do. I do. Love Remy Wolf. I saw her oh, at the fun. Greek Theater. She was so good, so so good. I really, really, truly enjoyed that show. Um, anyways, and then I was supposed to go see. Do you know who uh Lola Young is? Yes. I was supposed to go see her last night, but I had to work. Oh. Something. Oh, I saw Jaime was putting put yeah. her. I was like, oh, if I would have known a little bit earlier. Mm. But I was I tried to sell, I side. tried to sell my ticket, but I, I you know, it just yeah. I, yeah, I couldn't sell it on Ticketmaster. It was the whole thing. Anyway. Yeah, I bet. Um, I've been doing that, but other than that, I have just been um used and abused at work, mm, and not even the good kind. Not even the good kind. That's unfortunate. Because you know, you know me. I mean, <laughs> don't we know it? Don't we know it? You've heard. <laughs> you saw. <laughs> I've heard and I've seen. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Angel? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. <laughs> Yeah, but honestly, that's kind of been it. I've been a little bit in turmoil a little bit. Um yeah. but um coming out of it and good. Yeah. Yeah, here I am. Hopefully it all slows down at work. Yeah, I hope so. I hope that I have a life outside of work. Yeah, it's the tough part. Yeah. That's the tough part. I really, you know, I really just wanna I really just want to be rich. Don't we all? That's it. Don't I just want to be able to spend like endless amounts of money. Mm. Not, not endless amounts, but I just want to be able to go to the spa. Mm. I, want to go to, I want to go to a nice dinner. Okay. I want to go to the spa. I want to go to a nice dinner. And I want to, you know, buy buy nice things. Yeah. Buy things for Julie. That's it. Hello? Can someone make his dream come true? please uh yeah i think i think you're gonna get there one day 
You look Someday. so somber. No, I, I think you will get there. Um, and if people shared our podcast, we'd get there faster. Think, Do you, you listen to call her daddy? Even... No. Okay, you rolled your eyes. I'm curious as to why. I, there's just I don't he I I struggle with personalities that have gotten podcasts and now get exclusives but aren't good interviewers. Mm-hmm. So you have listened or watched some uh, clips, clips, sections of it. Sections and I quickly was like, you could, you could get to the meat of things. You have them right there, but you're well, not talented enough to. But I think that's also by design because it becomes a safe space for people to go to, to not have to answer tough questions. Is it? Is that what, sure. I mean, that's boring to me. Well, right. But I would, but yeah, I mean, but then I would agree with you. Like, that's not real. Like, I mean, I don't know if she calls herself a, a journalist. No, I don't think she does. Mm. But that's what I'm saying. I struggle with personalities getting a mm. podcast and then getting interviews. Like, mm. it's like that that other guy, Zach. Oh. I don't know who Zach is. I don't even know if that's really his name. From but he has where? a super popular podcast. Uh-huh. He gets all everyone go Hosier went there, like Trixie. Like he uh-huh. gets a bunch. Oh, every time I think about Trixie. Oh, is he does he have like a deep um, voice? Sure. Yeah. He's gay. He recently came out as gay. Huh. And he kind of talks like he's bored all the time. Yeah, yeah. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. another one that I'm like. This this person that got super popular mm-hmm. gets all of these great people and mm-hmm. asks. I don't even want the juicy stuff. Sometimes, sometimes like, why don't you just ask interesting stuff? Mm-hmm. I think Trixie made made fun of him in a in a show in a yeah in one of her shows. I did see that. Yeah, I did see and that. And she's like, then you go on a podcast and they ask you ridiculous questions. Like they definitely don't even know who you are. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I don't like that little man. I Which exactly I think it works for, so, like, I remember, uh, what was his name? The older gentleman? Larry? <laughs> Larry David. No, I don't think that's his name. Larry? He was an interviewer. He was older. Old, like old. I don't know. Oh, my God. I don't. I... But anyway, he used to say he interviewed people. It's going to kill me that I don't know his name. Let me look up Larry. I don't think it's Larry David. No, Larry David is a comedian. No, it's not Larry David. No, no. And it's not Dick Clark. But it's of... Are you sure it's Larry? No. (laughs) I'm not even sure it's David. He was on TV? He was on TV. He had... And he would interview people. He okay. he had he would interview Kathy Griffin a lot. That's the interviews that I used to see all the time. He had a late night news ish show. Uh huh. He was old and skinny, wore glasses. David Letterman. David, no, <laughs> no, no. Someone is screaming at their phone right now. <laughs> Someone is screaming at their phone, and it was like on it was like on the regular TV, like right, like a broadcast. I channel. think it was on cable. I think it was on cable. You know this guy. He's also had Trixie. He had Trixie. He's had Lance. He's still old. alive. No, I think he's dead now. Old white. <laughs> you're not inter- I don't know who you're talking about. Old white guy. No. But he interviewed he I mean if he's interviewing Trixie though like he could not be he can't be that old. He was old. Oh, when you're he... talking about Larry King. Larry King. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, oh my, my god. god. That was going to make my brain explode. That was that would have it would have. Larry King. Larry King. Okay, my point being, everyone's <laughs> everyone let out a sigh at the same time. I everyone mean. did. <laughs> oh my oh, God. Larry King, the homie. Uh, 
point to that was uh-huh. that he used to say that he used to do no research on mm-hmm. the people he would interview mm-hmm. because he wanted to know about them. Mm. What my point was going to be is that there's a difference between being interested in the human being you're talking to mm. and like maybe you don't know everything about them, but you're going to ask all the right questions because you care mm-hmm. about the subject matter. Mm-hmm. And then there's Al- what's her name? Alex or Zach, where it's like, I just care about the name. Mm-hmm. And we're here. Mm-hmm. And this is the a list of pre-approved questions. And we're just going to go with it. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. That I just find that very boring. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So whatever. I mean, but she's like one of the most successful podcasters. So what the fuck Apparently, do I know? Apparently behind Joe Rogan. Yeah, it's actually wild. She, yeah. She has like a multi-million dollar deal with Spotify or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I've never listened to her show. I've also seen clips, but um, you know, the most I've seen, I think, is from when she interviewed um Kamala. But mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I'm I've asked a couple people, particularly women, if they listen to her. Um, because I don't know, I haven't seen anybody or know anybody that's like talked about her or that mm. does talk about her. Um, so I'm just curious who I'm also an, I guess I'm not a lot, I'm not particularly close to a lot of white women in that i guess i was gonna say it's the white women it's the white yeah. women that are listening in yeah. droves yeah but it's the white women yeah yeah interesting interesting i, I agree yeah anyways here we are here we are you know giving alex cooper a run for her money sure sure call us what could be our thing Call us, um, call us sexy. Ooh. Okay. Oh, but you know what? We could, it could also just be call us funny. (laughs) Isn't that, that's a little funny. That's That's totally funny. I think it's funny. Call us funny. (laughs) Call us funny. Call us funny. Welcome to you. uh, Well, no, (laughs) call, welcome to call us funny. (laughs) Embarrassing for you. (laughs) <laughs> okay. okay um great um i'm you know i'm still upset about my hair remember i got a haircut not too long ago you're still upset about it it looks yeah. great well it's good Ugh, i hate that i yeah. hate the man who touched my hair i'm so sorry it's okay um okay um how is there anything else you would like to say anything else you would like to share with the people um no no, uh, <laughs> I saw Griffin concert. You saw Griffin concert, and you know what? You texted me this morning, Julie, and I. You hate me? No, I okay. was so tired and out of it, and then had to go straight into doing work stuff, and had to reschedule therapy to today. Um, and then honestly, and then honestly, I forgot about the text message. I and believe you. Yeah. And you were gonna say what? I'm being honest. I believe you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just want you to I'm know. I'm just that kidding. I... No, it's fine. Do you want to share what happened? Yes, I do. Okay, so I saw Griffin concert, which honestly disappointed. Give me a second. Let me finish my sentence. Disappointed, shocked, and appalled that Jaime also saw Griff and decided to not send over a voice memo about it. <laughs> it's like he doesn't even know me. It's like he doesn't even care. He's a little busy right now. This time of year is busy for him at work. And he's moving. No. 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 I don't accept that. I'm getting disappointed by so many gay men. And <laughs> I don't. And I hate that for me. And I hate that for me. Um, I saw Griff in Seattle. Um, she is the moment. She is phenomenal. I walked into that little, little, what's it called? Venue. venue. That's uh-huh. the word. Little venue. A fan. A casual fan. I said, it'll be a good time. I enjoy her music. I walked out of there, a die hard fan who would die for her. Okay. I stood there for an hour and 30 minutes in awe of that tiny little woman and the things that she could do, not only with her voice, but while dancing on stage, she did not miss a note. You were like in the very front. Yeah, I was right up there. Yeah. I was right up there. I want to say we made eye contact at least twice. Uh Let me live with that. Let me live Mm -hmm. with that. 
um when the show ended there was a couple right behind me and the guy was like that mic was on the entire time Mm -hmm. it was on the entire time um she is so fun i was standing right next to a mother and daughter whose Mm -hmm. daughter it was a teenager the daughter's first concert Mm -hmm. the mom hadn't gone to a show in over 10 years but her daughter didn't have it (laughs) just kidding i'm just kidding I was just kidding. But her daughter had no one to go with. So she said, yeah, okay, I'll go with you. That's and the cute. daughter kept turning around before the show and being like, mom, I apologize for how annoying I'm about to be when Griff comes on stage. Oh. I was like, oh my God, I hope Griff is everything. And we were talking before and I was like, you know, I discovered Griff because I started realizing that the pop music space is very white and so i was like let me look for i know there's women of color making pop music i just you know they're not as easily accessible or easily known and she's like you know what that's why i discovered her as well because i was looking for pop girls that were women of color and she told me all that she's like did you did you know she produces her own music did you know that she comes on stage and she loops her vocals live in front of everyone i was like I didn't know any of this. I I'm a casual fan, but let me uh, sign me right the fuck up. And sure enough, she got on stage. Two questions. How old Tell is me. this young lady? The the one with the mom? She seemed like a teen, like okay. younger than 18. Okay. And then how, how how does Griff identify? Is she like is she, what's her um ethnicity? I want to say she's Filipina. Let oh. me confirm that though. She's from the UK, I believe. Oh. Um I just saw a TikTok of Latino men from the UK and they're speaking Spanish and it sounds like a regular Spanish accent. And mm-hmm. then and and then they bust out their British accent. I mean, I think I need to go find me a Latino man in the UK. I agree. They look like the ones here. They just have a better accent when they speak English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Um, okay, sorry. One moment. Her. Okay, so her father is the son of Jamaican immigrants, and her mother is first-generation migrant whose family moved to England amid the Vietnam War. Oh. Griff has stated that she feels more in touch with her Chinese side. Oh, interesting. Okay. And she's from the UK, so. Lovely. Yeah, she's so good. And I knew her songwriting abilities were exemplary. Um, But she really, her performance for such a small venue felt like we should be in the middle of hundreds of thousands of people. Like, she gave it her all. And again, I left there 1,000% head over heels over her. I've listened to her album, I think, every single day since that day. Um, and then yesterday she, or the day before yesterday, she kicked off. Now she's an opener for Sabrina Carpenter. Oh, huge, wow. huge deal. Yeah. Huge deal. Um, right now Griff is at 500,000 followers. I screenshotted it. Cause I'm like, I really want to see how much she grows after the Sabrina Carpenter tour. Cause I can already feel like she's gonna, everyone's going to be like, this is the girl to watch next. And so I posted a video like, hey, you know, this is for the girlies that go for the openers. You have to show up for Sabrina Carpenter opener, blah, blah, blah. And then Griff commented on it. And I'm going to reply to her because I did email her people a couple of weeks ago and I've heard peep about it. Mm. I want to be like, tell your people to unblock my email address, please. Uh I just want you to come on our pod and discuss Uh Uh um yeah she's amazing she's amazing so humble so passionate about what she's doing and because of covid and a lot of things like the album was delayed quite a bit um but i think she truly released an album that is like perfect no skips beginning to end it's wonderful listening experience incredible yeah you and griff bffs BFFs. Would you ever be? Season. Would you ever be an assistant to a celebrity or to like a musician to a Griff? Would like if some if Griff was like, come be my assistant. Would you leave your 100%. job? Hundred percent. 
That looks like my kind of chaos. Mm. Like, I'm not like, oh, that would be so fun. No, it'd probably be a fucking headache. Mm -hmm. But I feel like that would be so fulfilling. Well, mm -hmm. it depends on the artist, right? Some artists mm -hmm. are like, oh, this fucking guy again. Mm -hmm. But I feel like if it were for like a griff, someone mm -hmm. you admire, you know, it's different. It feels like, okay, we're we're a team in this but could, But do you think that 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 could you know now you're now that person is your boss do you think that maybe some of the magic may go away um maybe are you, are you willing to do that for an artist that you love i mean here's the thing i re i mean i know you fuck around a lot about my job here but i really I do pride myself in my work ethic and like i don't like to let a stranger down let alone someone that i would admire though it happens right whether you want to or not but i feel like it would just be fulfilling i mean maybe it would fade the the allure of it would fade right because you're you know busting your ass for someone 24 7 i don't know griff hire me let's see let's yeah. see what happens let's totally see what happens also i just want to say that would alex cooper think of that question i don't know I thought it was a great question. Know. That was a great question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, guess what? Tell me. It's time for the pop culture pop up. Uh, first up on the pop culture pop up, sad news. Yeah. Uh, One Direction member Liam Payne has passed away. At the yeah. age of 31, I believe. Um, he was in a hotel in Argentina. And he fell off the third story balcony. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I mean, it's really quite sad. And, yeah. And kind of crazy when things like this happen. You know, especially when it's like a band of that kind of magnitude. You know? where yeah. their cultural impact is so massive and it's like who on the planet doesn't know who one yeah. direction is you know and and then all of a sudden one of them dies and it's one thing where you're an older person in who is a known public figure but to be a particularly young person it's very very sad yeah. Oh, I have so many thoughts about this particular subject. Um, I don't even know where to start. Um, I I think I think. Did you see what TMZ did? I heard. I didn't see, but I heard. I saw. Mm. Because it was the first thing that popped up with the news on on it, so mm. I clicked on it. Um, for those of you that don't know, a little bit of a trigger warning if you don't like hearing about dead people. Um, TMZ posted cropped pictures of his body uh, where it fell. Um, his arm specifically, I think, to show the tattoo to confirm to the world that it was him. The, the news came out very quickly after it happened. So I can only imagine how... His family found out that it was probably at the same time that we all found out. Mm -hmm. It was probably the same way that we all found out. Mm -hmm. um, I feel, um, I think there, there's a lot of discussion about the media and what the media is doing, but I also want to touch on yet again, the toxicity of fandoms. And there are so, so many people online writing so many ridiculous theories conspiracy theories something doesn't look right this can't be exactly what happened they're not telling us something this seems weird i don't think that helps anybody um for all the thought and care that everyone screamed at tmz over his family and you know did you think about their family i feel like the fandom is being just as bad just as bad with all this theorizing and all this waiting on bated breath for Niall and Louie and Zane and Harry to react. 
And I just kept thinking, how difficult must it be to be one of those boys right now and try to perfect a statement about a person that you love because you don't want to get criticized over it? Um, I feel so sad about it. Um, there's also, look, weeks prior to this happening, his ex-girlfriend came out with allegations against him about his abusive behavior his drug use, um, and tons of other problematic things that he was. There's, there's people blaming her for this happening. Um, and I just feel like wherever you land on, on this is bad. It's nasty. The opinions coming out of everyone's mouth are ridiculous. Like I've posted on TikTok one video about it. It was, this is what happened. I'm already seeing the fandom be a little bit toxic. We should reel it back. And that was it. I see people posting minute to minute updates about what's happening. And I just think that is so unfair for the people that are grieving. Fans, droves of fans that have scoped out in front of that hotel for what to see to literally see who shows up for him like i his dad is there now at the hotel he could he could barely go into the hotel the paparazzi the fans everyone that was surrounding him like the, it, it's just so horrible and we can sit here and theorize like well you know his ex-girlfriend said this and his label dropped him and this happened and that happened and his his current girlfriend left him in Argentina when he was going through it and blah 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 this was literally nobody's fault but his, his own he's the one that took the drugs he's the one that acted erratic she's the one that from what we're hearing and we have to take what we're hearing from police not from rumors but from police it seems to be that he chose i don't think he chose to jump i think he was trying to get somewhere and he jumped and he he didn't land and any you know and it happened um all this speculation about who sold him the drugs and did it, that's not our job right it's just, it's, it just, I feel like things like this bring out the nastiest parts of society. And for someone that loves to talk some shit and loves to talk about celebrities, I just feel like people's death is none of my business and we shouldn't speculate and we shouldn't make it a circus because there are so many people that are hurting. And at the end of the day, his son, who is now seven, is going to grow up one day and see the nasty, disgusting world and how horribly they treated his father's death. That sucks. Yeah. It's the, we have a humanity problem. Yeah. We have an internet problem. We have a humanity problem. Like TMZ, somebody had to send those photos to TMZ. Like who is yeah. that person that was there and took those photos and then their first thought is, I'm going to send these to TMZ. Yeah. You know, it's just it's it's kind it's bonkers and it's crazy and it's just very kind of like why? Why? Well, money. Sure, but like all right, we're gonna rot in hell then. You yeah. know? Like yeah. now you have to live with yourself, you know. It just is a little it's a little it's really crazy. Um yeah. and it's really sad. It's just very sad all the way it's around. It's very sad. And you, grief is complicated and and admiration over things that helped you and healed you when you're a teenager um, are held very, I, I know how wrapped up in your heart they can become, feeling uh, confused in your grieving process over this man that became a complicated adult while he was a, teenager that you loved and admired and and was obsessed with I can so understand how complicated that grieving process is but I I it's okay to feel bad that he's dead while acknowledging that he was a very complicated and maybe very pro problematic grown-up 
and that's okay. And it doesn't have to be more than that. A lot of people are problematic. A lot of and people a lot are of, And a lot of people love those problematic people. Yeah. Because a lot of people have a varying degrees of problems in their lives. Yep. And not everybody grows up in front of the world. Right. So it's hard. It's very, very hard. Okay. We'll move on to funner things. Okay. A- Andrew Garfield was on Chicken Shop Date. Um, wh- What's her name again? I forgot her name. I'm Amelia. So Amelia. Uh, that Amelia, talk about a talk about a journalist. Um, talk about a journalist. <laughs> I do love me some chicken ch- chicken chicken shop date. I love it. Okay. I have not so seen then... this episode. I'm sorry. Mm. I haven't seen it. What I'm what I'm sorry. I've seen it three times. Seen it three times. But I've seen it three I, times. You know what I did see? Do you tell me? The thing where Andrew is. I think he's in an interview and he's re- he starts reading this thing that somebody else wrote and then he starts crying and I'm just like, wait, what's happening? And then you realize that this, 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 I forget what the story is actually about, to be honest with you, but he felt that so deeply and I was like, oh, wow, that's incredible. 100%. And I don't say this lightly. I want to be clear. And this is a thing I've only said one time before in my life. And I'm going to say it here again. Um, Andrew Garfield was written by a woman. And mm. I, I I, mean that from my the inner depths of my soul. Mm. Have you seen his interaction with Elmo? I saw, I saw a very brief clip of it. I, I don't think I saw the whole the thing. The first clip made you feel stuff. Elmo and him. I was sobbing this morning. Uh-huh. He's like, talking. He's talking to Elmo about his mother who passed away recently. And yeah. grief, yeah, yeah, and going through grief. And you know, he's talked about his mom and grief previously. He has a very famous Stephen Colbert interview about it as well. And just this perspective that he has on losing his mom is so beautiful and so emotionally mature. Um, and I, I, I think I love him. I think I love him. I and think I've, you, you know do. What? I admire Amelia, but I would also beat that bitch down for him. So mm. I just need her to know to watch her back because the chemistry between those two, I was like, should we be here? Should we be here? Why are I we did, here? I did see months ago where she was on the red carpet and they ran into each other. And the, that was also electric between the two of them. Yeah. Yeah. Where did Amelia come from? Do you know? No, but I haven't felt this level of excitement over something since Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper were doing the A Star is Born press tour. And that made me feel alive. And so this, I want studio executives to get sent this video so they could study it because this is what we want in rom-coms. This is what we want. Have you ever had chemistry with somebody like that before? No. Really? Not once. Yeah. Not isn't, once. That, isn't that crazy? Yes. <laughs> she starts crying. Okay, but what about Have you? Well, I haven't seen the video. But, but romantic- what about the red carpet version of it? Romantically, I would say no. But I would say um that I do have chemistry with people. Agreed. In a in a non romantic way, yeah. That Agreed. I think is kind of wild. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 You know what's tough? I'll tell you is if having chemistry that's great and palpable. Though, e- even if it, I want to be clear, even if it could be one sided, I forgot where I was going with that. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. Well, let me. I did. I did want to bring something up. I was. Tell me. I saw a clip. Do you know who Montel Fish is? No. Montel Fish is a singer. He's like an R and B singer, okay. and him and Omar Apollo were like. I I just saw a very small clip, so I don't know what they were actually doing, but it looked like they were interviewing each other. They were having a conversation at like a diner, and Montel mm-hmm. Fish said something interesting. He said, "I think I have a woman's soul." And I was like, that's very interesting. 
to me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and I think also very cool of him to say that. Okay. Yeah. Um, and acknowledge that, mm. and acknowledge that the really beautiful things about him, the sensitivity, the emotion, the ability to connect with his art in this particular type of way, he can recognize that, that that is a feminine energy Mm. that a lot of time can't be captured by the masculine energy, by the masculine soul. Um, I love that. And I do love that, yeah. Anyways, you had brought up that a woman wrote him. And so yeah, yeah, yeah. I think often about how exciting it must be to encounter a man, a straight man, or a man you I me would be romantically interested in. How exhilarating would it be to encounter someone like that that's like emotionally intelligent? Mm. Yeah. If you yeah. ask me what what's the shit I daydream about is <laughs> having a conversation with a man who is emotionally intelligent. Sometimes I see these men, the hosiers, the Andrew Garfield. Well, that's what we have access to, right? I'm sure men that are not famous exist like this, but that's what we get to experience for women that have not encountered these men in, in real life. And I think how exhilarating must it be as a woman that's dating to encounter a man like this and be like, Oh, it's not all bleak and horrible. Even if nothing comes of it. I've encountered one man and he is unattainable. So it's not looking good. It's Who not looking it? good. Oh, I can't. Oh, you currently know them. I do. I see. <laughs> I haven't felt you know a little bit, but not like this overwhelming. And it is, it truly is exhilarating to talk to a man who is straight that you could be attracted to and realize, oh, he gets me in a way that no one else has gotten me or tried to get me. Um it's just so different. And I so just wish powerful. Uh-huh. Sorry. <laughs> no. That is, is so powerful, yeah. And I yeah. wish more men would notice that that's literally what women want i mean i think that's what most people want you know if no okay no no i don't think that's what most people want what do you think most people want i think most people want simple simple not deep and i think that some people uh i think most people will reconcile short exciting moments long term Mm. it was exhilarating for this amount of time it's faded we actually don't have a lot in common but now we're comfortable Mm. and now we're here Mm. and i think a lot of people exist in those kinds of relationships Mm. and they don't care to look for something better than that do you think that they don't care maybe they just don't know that they can i think that they've never experienced it so it's like well this is what it's always gonna be like and i also think that that conversation around dating can be so bleak that even when like a lot of my coupled up friends are like dude if i'm ever single again <laughs> it's gonna be rough you know what i mean they don't even want to enter t- it's not an exciting course, process yes, right Where before when when i remember when we were younger feeling like dating was this exciting thing and this fun thing and even married couples were like oh my god you're so lucky you get to mm-hmm. date and go out and now it's this thing that's like dude that doesn't sound fun at all and i'm yeah. so sorry you're going through that um but I, I do think that a lot, I just read this book called Happy Ending by Emily Henry or Happy Place, Happy Place by Emily uh, Henry. Not happy Endings. <laughs> not ha- unfortunately not. <laughs> but she, they, they talk about, about this, this idea of this realization that this girl has that her parents didn't really get a happy place. They mm. just kind of settled for what was good enough. And then by the time they realized it's not what they wanted, they were too settled into each other to look for something better. Um, yeah. Well, this society also rewards couples being together. Yeah. Like it's difficult to be a single person. And so yes. 
a lot of the time you're like, I don't, I don't want, why do I, why am I going to try to struggle? And everything is very much aimed as you get coupled up the younger, the better. Right. Because you have to start having kids. Tell Fuck me about the it. kids, honestly. Yeah, yeah. If you hate your person. Teach your kids that they can find something better. I think about that all the time. I was just talking to someone about this. Can you imagine meeting someone, falling in love, being like, this is my person for life. I love this person. Being completely enamored with them. You have a baby. You realize they're a shit partner. They're a shit parent. They were good to you, but they're not good with the child. Mm-hmm. How devastating must that be? I mean, life is. A and it serious... happens all the time. Yeah. That's why so many married single mothers exist. Right. Yeah. I told. Yeah. I mean, oh my God. Humans are nuts. So, Nut Amelia cases. and Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> Emily and Andrew gave me the energy that I needed. They made me think, maybe it's not so bad to get out there. I mean, it is, but they just made me think it. They made me think, like, maybe it's not. Maybe it'll be good. To, to Just to play devil's advocate a little bit, do you think that there is something to say about the fact that they're both entertainers. The lights are on. The cameras are on. Um, there, maybe it's a bit of a bit. Um, I think you could make the argument for that, but I've seen all her chicken shop dates. Uh-huh. That has yet to be replicated. Andrew uh-huh. and her have something different. Uh-huh. I think there are, there could, I mean, Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper. Uh-huh. There's people that really, really sell it. You know what but I probably, you know what probably happened? She probably realized how of a fucking crazy he is. Who? Lady Gaga. Oh, I was like, Bradley, he's crazy. Oh, you don't think so? I don't know. I, I don't like that. I think he's crazy. <laughs> I think like okay, he's an in, why? like a, like an intense kind of person. I love intense people. Interesting. Okay. I love artistic intense people. Okay. People that are super passionate about whatever they're creating. I fucking have you live ever for se- that shit. Have you ever seen him on Wedding Crashers? I have, but it's not something I can place. I've seen okay. the movie, but I can't place it. Oh, it's okay. Anyways, I maybe he gives me a little bit of kind of like crazy weird. I dig it. Yeah, okay. That kind of matches, actually, in the tracks. <laughs> you know, I'm starting to realize that I really love a personality that is closed off. Closed off, shy, mysterious, private, but you slowly worm yourself in there as friends. And then and then I'll be like, oh, I have a crush on this person. But then do you not worry that then I talked to my therapist about this not too long Tell ago. Tell me. Don't you then worry that then you've gone too deep into friend zone and... Every single time. Okay. (laughs) 100% of the time. So then what are you to do? Just keep doing it until it lands, I guess. (laughs) I'm just kidding. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. There are two men at work right now. Not even. There's two other men at work. Uh Very cute. Very much banter very much but i'm like i physically cannot compute friendly flirting that's not even a that so i always what do you mean like i can't figure out when men are being just friendly oh i see or Or if they are trying to flirt because it all kind of if you're not careful it all looks the same Mm. it all feels the same when people get very comfortable with you i mean i flirt with angie all the time you know what i mean like I do. I say all kinds of crazy shit to Angie, but like I, d- you know, but we know better. And when you say you flirt, are you like being like, like more forward about like I, what do you mean like you flirt? I don't know. Extra complimentary. Uh huh. Okay. I don't know. Maybe I also something to think about. Maybe I don't know how to flirt. 
Have we considered that know. as a society? Maybe. I feel like that's something we should look into. What does what is flirting? That's a great question. I think if you watch the Amelia and Andrew uh-huh. interview, I feel like we get close to it there. There is a point in this interview, by the way. It's all oh, guys. I highly recommend you guys go and watch it. The serotonin is worth it. Um, but there is a moment where where she asks, like, uh, she says snog, but you know, fuck Mary Kill. Mm-hmm about tom holland toby mcguire and herself amelia or but she doesn't say kill she says avoid uh-huh. and he's like struggling he's like i don't know i don't want to avoid any of you and she's like you have to pick you have to pick one uh-huh. and she's like well i can't do them like that i'd have to pick you uh-huh. and then she, she's like what me what and then they go back and forth for a little bit and then she's like why would you do that to me and he's like this is called flirting amelia we're flirting <laughs> and i'm like Amelia gets me. That would be me. That would be me. Yeah. So I don't know what flirting is. Who knows? And I don't think now he would help me anyway, to be mm. honest. Yeah. 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 Mm. Mm. Life is so complicated. Life is so complicated, but I miss feeling stuff, you know? Sometimes I'm okay with, like, being single. Well, most of the time, to be honest, I'm okay with being single. Because sometimes I think about being in a relationship, and I'm like, oh, can you imagine? I have to go home and, like, think of someone else? Oh, I can't. I can't. I could, could not be me. And so every other time, I'm like, great. But sometimes it'd be nice. To like have someone to go out with, snuggle. You feeling bad? They make you feel better. Yeah, but it's hard. Yeah, I mean, ugh, ugh, gross. <laughs> I just smoke a joint at the end of the night that makes me feel better oh dude i haven't smoked in so long i don't even know what that feels like anymore oh my god you should come over and we should smoke okay oh my god how fun would that be that would be super fun obviously i don't want to get you sick but let me get over this well okay i'm not inviting you tonight (laughs) i'm not letting you into my house while you're sick no I was, there was no need for the sass. I was Ugh. already telling you that I wasn't going to go over when being sick. I, that felt unnecessary and honestly a little rude. Okay. <laughs> and third of all, how dare you? I just wanted to make it clear that I don't want to get sick. While <laughs> I said that I wasn't, do you guys see what the fuck I'm dealing with? I can't, you know what? The audacity. <laughs> I can't. I can't. First, you don't watch the Amelia interview. And then you come over here with this kind of bullshit. I I don't know what to tell you. I was working so I can buy you weed. You know what? I forgive you. Okay. And I was going to buy you snacks and dinner. Okay. I forgive you. I forgive you. I didn't know about the snacks. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. Next up on the pop culture pop up. Apparently, allegedly, supposedly, according to Julie, the sexiest man alive announcement is coming soon. Sexiest man alive. They're going to announce it soon. Uh, Yeah. Who do you think it shall be? A white man, probably. (laughs) I think it'll, it could be Sebastian Stan because he has that movie coming out. I think it could be. Yeah. I think it could be Paul Meskel because he has Gladiator coming out. Uh huh. Um, I think it should be Colin Farrell because the Penguin is very successful, and I think he needs a little boost for that Emmy campaign. Uh huh. Let me get on the phone with people. Um, but what? Who I really think it should be? I think Colin Farrell actually. Now that I think about it, has a high chance of it being because I do think if his people were smart, they would push him for that to kick off an Emmy campaign because the Penguin is doing really good. It's like the episode four of the Penguin is rated 9.5 out of 10 on IMDb, wow. which is like unprecedented. Who I think it should be is Aldous Hodge, mm-hmm. who also has a show coming out on Amazon in November. Mm-hmm. This would be a great opportunity to promote that. And Aldous Hodge has been hot 
for at least 20 years. And where is the recognition for a beautiful black man? We get so little of the mainstream recognition of them. And Aldous Hodge has been consistently working in Hollywood, making good projects. And the mainstream media is not paying diddly squat attention to him. And I think I'm sick and tired of that. I'm sick and tired of it. And he has a show coming out on Amazon Prime in November called... That's not the point. The point is when <laughs> when it gets closer to the day, I'm going to give you all the details. Something cross. Detective cross. Don't worry about it. Don't look at me. I'm going to give you the info. Okay. That is a gorgeous man. Yeah. A gorgeous. He is beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Takes my breath away. Yeah. And as we know, usually these men that get it is because they're promoting something. Right. And he is promoting something. Yeah. So think- I'm going to leave the link to my petition for, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you think- linked in her bio. I think Colin Farrow or Paul Mescal are, are the top contenders probably. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm thinking they'll probably go with Paul actually. 100%. Yeah. 100% they're going to go with Paul. However. So, uh, tell me. No, you go first. I was going to say, though, I feel like he's, give him a minute to really heat up. He's at the be- beginning of his career. I say give him a second. Maybe give it to him a couple years down the road. Has Colin not gotten it before? Predict- I don't think he has. Hmm. I think he's been on the You know how they release a whole list. I think he's hmm. been on the list, but he's never been the main one. The number one guy. Hmm. It should be me, honestly. But Honestly, you have never said anything more truthful in your life than that. Hottest so. underground podcaster. 100%. That doesn't post to Instagram or to right, but that's not the point. Twitter. You're still hot. Thank you. Uh you no, you know who I you know who I think it should be. It should be Hassan Piker because you he's single handedly saving society as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Uh, no, I do th- I yeah, I do think it should be Hassan. Hassan, I think, is very hot. Hassan, mm, my god. He's given everything. Ugh. Lord, I did see an interview with him. I saw a clip of an interview with him the other day, and he was talking about how the internet is really grooming and breeding really right wing conservative men in this country. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I think, and he is on the opposite end of that spectrum. And so I think it's refreshing to see a young millennial man who likes to work out and loves to play basketball and is very handsome and blah 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 blah. um talk about being on the right side of history when he talks about the things that he talks about and so right um yeah anyways i do think that i think that the internet is the most dangerous place in the world i just want to make that very clear i agree okay um be sure to catch uh our future episode where we interview the sexiest man alive 100 percent manifesting yeah yeah finally on the pop culture pop-up you know every day every day that passes we get a little bit closer to being able to watch wicked and every day that passes a new thing happens uh, Cynthia Erivo posted on mm. her social channels. She I say sure social did. channels because I don't know where she actually posted this. Basically, and you may you may be able to describe this better than I can, Julie. But basically, she was upset that people were playing around with the Wicked poster, making different. AI things. The one that I definitely saw is the one. The poster is basically, I forget, it's Galinda whispering into, I'll use their real names, Ariana whispering into Cynthia's ear Mm -hmm. and basically say, like, the caption is, like, is your pussy green? And then there's AI of them, like, starting to fight each other. It's funny. It's very funny. But Cynthia doesn't think it's funny. Yeah, she said it's the most disrespectful thing she's ever seen in her life. Yeah. And I said, well, aren't you lucky that that's the most disrespectful <laughs> thing you've seen in your life? Um, I'm going to give you a little backstory. So okay. the Wicked movie trailer was really, nope, the Wicked movie poster was released. The picture is an homage to the playbill of the Wicked musical. 
where Alphaba, Cynthia Rebo, is straight into the camera with her hat and the green. And uh, Galinda is in her t saying something in her ear, ear. In the Broadway playbill, the hat is covering Alphaba's eyes and it's just a smirk on her face. In the movie poster, Cynthia Rivo is looking directly. You can see her eyes and she's looking directly into uh, the camera. The initial edits that were coming out were people edited the image so that it would resemble exactly the play bill of Wicked the Musical. And that's the one that she posted to her Instagram. That's what she was so upset about was this one that it covers her eyes and she says it erases erases her. No. It was literally just an attempt at an actual homage to the trailer, a closer homage to the playbill. Um, if there's one thing Cynthia Revo has a bad quality about, or I said that weird, if... <laughs> There is a bad quality about Cynthia Rebo. It is her ego. This woman has repeatedly shown her how huge her ego is. And I'm not saying she doesn't look, this woman is talented. That voice, her version of I am here for the color purple is out of this world. Something that cannot be replicated something that only she she will be able to do in the world she is so insanely talented but she leads with her ego and i think that is so boring that is so boring and that makes her annoying and it has nothing to do with her blackness because no one was trying to erase her blackness and no one was trying to erase her image we're, we all have it very clear and everyone celebrated that we were getting a black alphaba. Everyone's excited. Not everyone. I'll take that back. There, racism is still a thing. It still very much exists. But these images that were so disrespectful, the most disrespectful thing that she's ever seen, that that's not what that was. And I think if she would have Who's to say if she did or she didn't? But if she would have looked into it a little bit, she would have seen that the reason why they edited those pictures without her face in them was to attempt to recreate the playbill. Not to erase her. Cynthia, your response? <laughs> uh, I just want this movie to come out because the more interviews she gives the more annoying she's making and she seems and it makes me not like we're already on tight rope with ariana we're on we're hanging on by a thread here i've heard that the people who have seen it say it's absolutely incredible like i cannot wait i want people to stop interviewing her I well, really it's do. Gonna, it's only going to pick up. We're about, we're just a couple days away from it being the month mark. So we're mm -hmm. about to be inundated. Did you see Ariana? I know that you didn't, but I'm going to ask anyway. Did you see Ariana huh? on Saturday Saturday Night Live? No. No, she was really good. She's so good. I'm sorry. It's just every time this woman talks, she gives me inauthentic. I just can't connect with an artist like that. I can't. I can't do it. I wonder I what you it. find inauthentic. I find her to actually be quite authentic. To I yeah. cannot. It's it's. Is it the high pitched voice? No, it's the fact that she alters her voice in general. It's but, the fact but that she's, she's talking mentioned... like Glinda. Well, she's mentioned that she does that be so that it per like it's supposed to help with her singing voice. No. <laughs> Julie's eyes just rolled so far back. Ma'am, I just, I look, and this isn't any, I, I was just as hard, if not harder, on Austin Butler. So Miss Ariana can save her feminist rant about it because it's not about that. It's just like it, it gives me inauthentic. I, I just can't connect with someone like that. I just can't. I find it silly. I find it like there's a, a line where the creativity like that's something like not just her but like that's something that i would be like that's crazy create like what you were saying about bradley cooper 
that's what Ariana, Austin Butler, these people that like go into these characters and like can't seem to shake them off. That's what I makes me feel would be insufferable in a creative person. Um, remember when she said she hated America? Yeah, but I mean, same. So that's not even part of it. I should vlog going to that donut shop. <laughs> you should. You should. And also lick a donut. See what happens. Mm. <laughs> Yum. Um, that's going to do it for the Pop Culture Pop-Up. We'll be back next week with more pop culture cheese. Julie, do you have a Latinx spotlight for us? I 100% do have a Latinx spotlight for you. And the only reason why I didn't cancel the recording today is because I wanted to come, well, because I love Adrian, and because I wanted to come on here and discuss this movie with you. I got to see an early screener of Your Monster starring Melissa Barrera. And babes, when I tell you that you absolutely need to get to a theater on October 25th and watch this movie, this movie is so special because depends on what kind of lens you're looking at it with you're either getting a romantic love story between a depressed girl going through some heart heartache and a monster a literal monster in her closet or i got to see it i saw the screener twice and i literally watched it was like watching two new movies you can also see it as someone who is going through depression and is kind of discovering these bits and pieces of herself that she has thrown to the back of the brain, thrown to the back, ignored the pieces of herself that may not be as pretty, as shiny, as kind. Um, and she's rediscovering them and falling in love with that version of herself all over again. However you choose to look at it, this movie is worth watching. Um, it is dramatic. It is intense. It is a little bloody, but it's such a beautiful trip. And it's funny. It's funny. And if you're choosing to look at it through a lens of a rom-com, this movie is so funny, adorable. The chemistry between the two leads is palpable. Um, I need everyone to go and see this movie. If you remember, in this house, we support Melissa Barrera in anything and everything she does. October 25th, this movie comes out and I will see you in the theater i am getting a little group together to go and see this movie you can come adrian if you'd like i am pulling everyone and anyone that i can we shall be buying all of the movie tickets um i want that theater full if i have to pull people from the streets i will do so i think melissa barrera deserves all of the success and i think that she continues to do these very fun and exciting projects and because she's not really i from what I gather, she's not really interested in nonstop big budget or nonstop big studio. Um, she's just looking for exciting. They're not as mainstream. They don't get as much marketing. We don't get to hear as much about them. But I'm here to remind all of you, your monster comes out October 25th. And you will make it to a theater. If I have to message each one of you directly to ensure that you made it to a theater to watch this movie, then that's what I'm going to have to do but we will be watching it. Again, I've seen the screener twice. I shall be going to the theater and watching it a third time. We should give away free movie tickets. 1,000%. Wouldn't that be fun? That would be so fun. I am so down. Okay. October 25th? Well, well, I, I, I already have plans for October 25th specifically. But Do you guys I was, see what I'm dealing with? I don't know. <laughs> But Forget we can, it. but we can. I don't give, want to do it anymore. No, <laughs> but we could like give away like free movie tickets. Totally. I don't know how we would do that exactly, but um, we'll figure it can, out. Someone on the team can look it up. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for sharing, Julie. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, time for some asukad. My asukad this week is um. What is it? Oh, you know what? That's what it is. We're living in unprecedented times. Um, oh, man. The Real Housewives of Orange County, the Real Housewives of Potomac, the Real Housewives of New York, and the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City are all airing new episodes oh, my God. right now. It's a little, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it, quite the time to be alive. Uh, uh, we're towards the end of, of Orange County. We're at the very beginning of Potomac. Mm. We're in the middle of Salt Lake City. We're also at the beginning of New York. Um, housewife. Exactly. It's exactly. a housewife's autumn. Wow. And I love it. I love I that love for it. you. I love I love watching women's stories. I think women's stories are important. Wow. And I support them. I love that. Thank you so I much. I love women. <laughs> and women love you. Thank you. Women love you. You're welcome. Uh lovely. I love that. Um my azúcar. I have to do it. Tell me. Can I I've been trying not to ask you because I thought that this was what your asuka was going to be, but can I make a prediction as to what your asuka is going to be? Tell me. Is it the Andrew Garfield and Florence Pugh movie? No. Oh. But it should be. Oh, sorry. No. You know what? I have two asukas. We Live in Time came out. Guys, did you guys go see it? Because what the fuck? Why do I get on here and rave about movies and you guys don't see them? We Live in Time is a beautiful movie. It is the... It might just be an Andrew Garfield thing. I, I'm almost certain that if I got in front of him, there would be chemistry and it will be palpable. Because him and Florence Pugh on screen, it is. it was so refreshing to see Andrew Garfield in like a partner, an emotionally intelligent partner role that is like loving and charismatic and funny and Florence Pugh is perfection per usual. The movie is gut wrenching. I should have known in the screener, they gave us Kleenex and I said, Oh, these are cute. They were preparing us. They were preparing us. Beautiful movie. We live in time. You should go and watch it. It is phenomenal. Are you going to go see it? I would like to. He's not going to. So anyway. I would like to, like, I just have to find the time. Like, I'd like to go, like, on the weekday in the middle of the day, you know? Well, don't be so encouraging, Julie. I've died. No. Um, No, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, You really should try your hardest to go see it. It is a beautiful movie. Um, But be prepared. All right. It's sad. Would you think of me differently if I didn't cry? No, I'd expect nothing less, to be honest. Okay. Okay. I feel like I'd be shocked if you cried. I'd be like, oh, interesting. That was weird. Julie thinks I have no soul. Well, I didn't say it, you did. Mm. So my other asuka, <laughs> I mentioned it already and I have to do it again. 9.5 out of 10 on imdb the penguin if you are you you're not watching it i have been busy with all due respect I have you watched fun. the real housewives yeah okay but that's like watching the okay movies. okay no it's fine the penguin uh colin farrell stina malor you guys know who she is and I'm going to memorize her name because she is so phenomenal in the show. And I'm so sorry I haven't yet. Okay. Four episodes in. So we're halfway. We're at the halfway mark. Um, Emmy campaign starts now. Um, I am really loving that the show is fully leaning into a villain. There is no redemption arc. There is no way that this man has a good part of his body he is absolutely a horrendous human being that does not give a fuck who he uh tramples over to get to the top um the acting is phenomenal the storyline is great you don't have to know a goddamn thing about the batman to watch the show watch it colin farrell is so good in this so good in this um and i know that i'm biased but i have polled all of my friends that i forced to watch it and they all agree so it's not just me um on hbo max every sunday at 6 p.m pacific time and sucks if you're in the eastern time because it's it starts at nine um but it's really really good i want everyone to watch it and again emmy campaign starts now for colin farrell excellent you know what i did watch i watched the second season of hacks I loved that. That was really good. I haven't seen it. I will. I'm. It's on my list. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
Excellent. Lovely. Thanks, Julie. Thank you. Well, we've made it to the end. Thank you for joining us and for going on this ride with us. Uh, make sure that you like, subscribe, review, share, do all the fun things you could do with this podcast on the internet. Make sure you follow us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok at you, me, and Cheese Make sure you visit youmeandcheesemet.com. Make sure that you share this podcast with somebody that you love um, because that would help us out a lot. Leave a review. And yeah, if you do all those things, we'll be back next week with more cheese But until then, make sure you have lots of love, lots of peace, and most importantly, lots of cheese in your life. Bye. Bye. Bye.